what we're trying to do is not an easy thing to do. It means we need to be willing to stick to that commitment, even when we fail and continue trying until we succeed. So thank you for having me. My name is Paloma Lopez. I am the CEO and co-founder of Future Fit Foods. Well, I have spent nearly two decades working in food, creating sustainable vision for food and working on a number of initiatives in that space, working on purpose-driven brands and also building sustainable culture programs. About three years ago, I left the corporate world to start a food startup called Future Fit Foods out of Colorado. And our mission is to bring people plant-based foods that put human and planetary health at the center of both design and decision-making. Uh, my vision is in the future, we will have regenerative and circular food systems that will replace the industrialized food systems that we're experiencing today. Uh, to make it really easy for people to access, access delicious, nutritious, zero waste, culturally relevant and responsibly sourced foods. Unfortunately, the last 50 years of industrialized food systems has created both social and environmental challenges that I don't think we can sustain for very much longer. About 40% of people in our planet are overweight. This is linked to non-communicable diseases like cardiovascular disease, diabetes. So clearly there's an impact to human health. From an environmental perspective, about a fourth of all of anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions are coming from agriculture. And also most of the soil in the world is in poor, very poor or extremely poor conditions right now. And this is due to monoculture, grazing, deforestation, obviously, uh, both from a planetary and from a human health perspective, they're directly linked to the way we grow food and the types of foods that people are eating today, both things that we cannot really sustain very much longer. To me, leadership is about inspiring people. You, you've got to inspire people to take action, to come along with you on a shared goal. Now, in terms of what's required to drive that type of leadership, I think we need leaders that are very self-aware. You can't really inspire others if you don't know what you've got to offer them. <laughs> so you need to start by knowing yourself, where your passion is. I think we also need leaders with a lot of courage because the challenges that we're talking about right now are not easy and they require going against the status quo and the system um, in ways that require a special type of courage and resilience. We also need leaders that know how to collaborate because again, these are system uh, wide challenges that no one person, no one organization can tackle alone. So this is a type of leadership that is not always centralized where you're comfortable letting go of control and being willing to experiment. So I think we are talking about a type of leadership that learns from iteration. So looking in the more unexpected places for answers, looking at other countries that might be economically less developed, that might have very different type of solutions. What matters the most to me? is what we can do to create the greatest positive impact on people's lives. In my case, through food. And so the values that underpin that number one priority are three. The first one is being willing to learn and experiment because we will not solve the problems of the present and the past if we continue to do the things that we've done over and over. We need to learn from our mistakes, Number two is collaboration. Nobody can change the system problems that we have on their own. Everyone plays a role in what we're trying to do here. And that also means letting go of some of the control we're used to and, and creating spaces where everyone feels safe and comfortable being part of the solution. And number three is commitment to the goal and being resilient. 
because what we're trying to do is not an easy thing to do, it means we need to be willing to stick to that commitment even when we fail and continue trying until we succeed. I can't highlight enough the importance of place and community in driving change. You've got to surround yourself by people who are um, driven, supportive, and people who are comfortable letting go of control to support each other towards a shared goal. I've found a lot of new allies in the supply chain, which has been quite interesting. People have done things that I ever thought they would have done just to help us. You know, a lot of customers, a lot of people in the community who have understood what we're trying to do and are spreading the word on our behalf, are supporting us, are giving us ideas. So I think allies come in every direction when you open the door to them, when you make them part of the mission and you show them that they're critical to what we're all trying to do here. Change begins with ourselves and with understanding our makeup, you know, make time for that self-reflection and for that personal growth so you can show up as the best person that you can be. And then the second area would be more in the space of energy management. Energy is action. Energy is change. We need to live life to the fullest with the fullest amount of energy so we can give the greatest to the people around us. CSL has been critical. I would say it gave me all the foundational knowledge that I needed to ask the right questions. I got tools that I was able to implement fairly quickly in the projects that I was working on. And I also gained access to a community of practitioners, many of whom have become friends as well. And that has an incredible value because that's a trusted community of people who are faced often with the same challenges, but might have found different solutions for the problems we're trying to solve. So.